I think it is a fundamental goal to try to understand how you can make structures with such a complexity at a really small length scale. And from that point of view, we're only starting to understand a little bit of how nature makes all its fascinating structures. Over the last three years, I've been looking at ways to grow micro-sized structures by manipulating the surrounding conditions. In this research, I learned how to combine chemistry to sculpt the crystal while it's growing. Every structure is maybe the diameter of a hair. The crystals are so small and hold together by this amorphous material that they can basically take any arbitrary shape. Basic science is critical. We do need to understand how and why things assemble, how and why the emergence of form leads to certain structures. Without this basic understanding, we won't be ever able to rationally design structures, materials, and complex systems that we can use in the future. Over the years, I've been growing thousands of these samples and I tried many ways to stack st structures on top of each other and to sculpt them while they're growing. I noticed, of course, that with all these experiments that some things aesthetically simply work better than others. And that's how I started to develop a sort of style in which most of the structures started to look like flowers because for me that was aesthetically the most attractive uh, way to make them. An interesting feature of this interaction was a consideration for beauty, a consideration of artistic value. If we're designing new structures, new materials, it is absolutely critical to think about their aesthetic appearance. To grow these structures, we mix together the two starting materials. And basically, as soon as I do that, the reaction starts. And then we wait for two hours. The fact that you already can grow such a flower in two hours really allows you to do a lot of experiments and, and learn a lot in a very fast manner. A lot of great science is of course done with very expensive equipment. And I think one of the nice things of, of this research is actually that you can use two very cheap chemicals, throw them together and already really do science. And I think that, that really shows that it can be approachable. So we now we mounted the sample. We're now ready to put them into the electron microscope to really take a look at the structures. These are the structures that we just were growing in the beaker when we performed the experiment. For three years now, I've been looking at these very strange white stripes on, on plates that are maybe only an inch long or so. And every time I'm amazed that it, it is a complete sort of coral reef that you are diving into as soon as you look under the microscope. I notice quite often that I simply forget to make uh, photos because I just want to look further and further on the samples and discover new structures and then get lost. As an example, I grew structures on top of a penny. When I put the sample into the microscope, it, it remains a sort of magical image that if you are really zoomed in, the image is sharp and you then zoom out, that you're suddenly in this kind of micro world that you made yourself and that you're surrounded by, for instance, tulip shapes or corals or, or all kinds of flowers. We use this as a model system. It doesn't have to be these materials. It's just the simplicity of that combination that will help us understand the emergence of form, the emergence of curvature, the emergence of complex hierarchical architectures. <laughs> <laughs>